Bulls Nation, stand up ladies and gentlemen and represent your team proud. The Chicago Bulls had performed a miraculous comeback in this game today against the Boston Celtics. I'm not going to lie, I have no idea how this was done. I cannot believe after the third quarter that we had that we were able to win this game. But nevertheless, I'm very proud of this team and we're going to be talking a lot about the positives and the negatives of this game and a huge comeback. And again, we continue our winning ways. Let's talk all about it in this video let's do it going on everybody it's the bull show aka aiden and welcome back to another video today we've got the chicago bulls versus the boston celtics game reaction i think many people coming into this game watching this game in the second quarter and the third quarter thought this game was a wrap i thought this game was a wrap i'm not gonna lie and say i saw this coming i completely and utterly did not expect to see a result like this coming especially when we were down by 19 but nevertheless the bulls didn't give up and we ended ended up grinding back into this game and we won it in dramatic fashion but before we get started please like and subscribe to the bull show turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about this game today this is a game that in my opinion it's a game that we steal from the boston celtics at the end of the day we did win this game 128 to 114 it was a fantastic victory by all stretch of the means especially by how this game went in the middle of the game the second quarter and the third quarter i don't think many people saw this coming and especially to win by double digits is fantastic for this team and i'm very very happy to see a victory like that go our way what a phenomenal comeback by the chicago bulls the first quarter was pretty solid in my opinion for this team we were shooting very very effectively i believe we made like five threes in a row and we kept on shooting the ball well and obviously the boston celsius did the same the issues lied in the second quarter and in the third quarter when i'm not going to be on i'm going to be honest i question this team's uh, energy in the second and third quarter. I thought this team was extremely lazy in the second and third quarters of this game. I thought everybody, except for maybe a few players off the bench, which we'll talk about later. Don't don't you worry about that. But I questioned this team's energy, and they looked extremely lazy out there, and to the point where I I didn't think we would come back just by how lazy we looked. But you bring on this bench, you bring on Io, you bring on Tony Bradley, you bring Derek Jones Jr. in, you bring Alex Caruso in, and you have the ability of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan scoring the ball. And we dramatically changed the game within one quarter. And the third quarter helped a little bit, but the one quarter in the fourth quarter was probably the best quarter offensively and defensively I've seen from this team all season. And this is by far, and I'm we might say this a lot this season, I think this is the most impressive win, and I think this is the biggest win of our season. And I want to give full respect to the bench of this team. This bench is unbelievably good at the moment. This game completely changed when the bench came in. I'm so proud of Ayo Dosumu. I'm so proud of Derek Jones Jr. I'm so proud of Tony Bradley. I'm so proud of Alex Caruso. Everybody that had a massive part of this game. And the bench changed the way this game went. And the bench is the reason why we won the game. Because again, I thought we were lazy. I thought we were lackluster. And I thought that we didn't deserve to win the game. This is a game that we stole from the Boston Celtics. I think by all rights, if Boston won this game, it was a rightful victory for them. I think they should have won this game. And this game would have went both ways. If we were down by 19 and we didn't make that comeback, there would be questions asked by fans around the world, analysts, reporters around the world about how the Chicago Bulls are going to be a serious team this season and all of that nonsense that they would be talking about. The Bulls are not a serious team. The Bulls got bullied. The Bulls got humiliated. And now it's going to turn to the Boston Celtics now. And, and there are going to be serious questions asked about the Boston Celtics and how they perform because... I think a loss like this is inexcusable. You saw you saw boos from their home court fans. And in all rights, if I was a Boston Celtics fan right now, I would be very upset with the team performance in the fourth quarter. It was a really, really bad fourth quarter. And they looked all out of sorts in that game in the fourth quarter. So there will be questions asked about them. And I think we knew coming into this game, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum are going to be the two. The two players that are going to score lights out and score with high efficiency. And they both had good games today. You can't lie. These were really, really strong performances from both of those players. In the second and third quarters, the one thing that I think really, really made it, or two things actually, that really took us out of that game 
turnovers and second chance opportunities two really important details that the chicago bulls we don't usually see them turn the ball over a whole lot but in the first half we had 10 turnovers in which is poor to say the least and then you start to bring other players into the game you brought Al Horford into the game because of those turnovers Marcus Smart into the game because of those turnovers Richardson into the game for those turnovers and you got other players involved and I think when you're verting the Boston Celtics Jalen Brown Jason Tatum they're going to have good games I don't think you can stop those two I think they're both amazing scoring players you need to make sure other players don't get involved. Thankfully, we won the game nevertheless, but those players got involved, and I think that that's why they were up by 19 and they were up by so much. And yeah, let's talk about the individual performances today. I don't want to get too much on a, on attention. My emotions are running high. I can't believe we won that game. I honestly cannot believe we won that game. But... A win is a win, and every win is deserved in this league. Luck is earned in this league. I don't think we were lucky today. I thought our fourth quarter was just simply outstanding. Zach Levine had 26 points, three rebounds, seven assists, and one steal in this game. With Zach Levine, extremely cold first half of the game. It looks like every single shot that he took, it was a close, it was this close to going in every time. And then it just rims out every single time. Many people were talking about Zach Levine questioning if he was even fit to play. The way that I saw those shots, I feel he was extremely unlucky to miss some of those shots. And again, I think that's just how I saw it. I think the Bulls commentary team kind of made me see it in that way as well. They were always talking about how it was in and out. And again, that kind of changed my perception of him today. The second half was absolutely superb and we needed his second half performance. At the end of the day, this team really lacked, I guess, leadership in the starting lineup. And I was going to, if we lost this game, I would have questioned the starting lineup's energy. I know we had good stats. DeMar DeRozan as well, Vucevic off of a close to a triple-double, all of those things. But I really would have questioned the starting lineup today and how they couldn't bring the energy that the bench did. So I have to give full credit to Zach Levine for his scoring late. And I think it was definitely a necessity on the offensive end. Nikola Vucevic had 11 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists, and 2 blocks. I don't think this is a bad game from Nikola Vucevic. Obviously, the paint defense, and again, I think Al Horford gave him a lot of trouble in today's game. But when he's not the guy that's scoring, again, there's not enough shots to go out for everybody. I think that's the safest thing to say. I don't think you're going to see every single game three or four players get 20 points. I don't think that's going to happen. So Nikola Vucevic was probably the man today that didn't get as much shots as you'd like him to get, but he contributed other ways. Nine assists for Nikola Vucevic is an outstanding performance from a center. Not many centers outside of maybe Nikola Jokic do you expect to get nine assists. And Nikola Vucevic did that today. So that's a huge performance from him. And I'm very, very happy with his production on the playmaking side of the ball. Defensively, we know his liabilities. I don't need to go too much into it. And I thought he was a little bit more efficient in today's game. Obviously, he wasn't shooting a ridiculous amount of shots. But he did his thing offensively as well for the limited shots that he got. Damar DeRozan had 37 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal, 1 block. Damar DeRozan is slowly becoming one of the best, well, I wouldn't say the best, one of my favorite players to watch on this team. Uh, I, I just can't believe the efficiency that he's scoring with, how is he has the, a, a unique ability to get to the line. Again, all these things that we know from DeMar DeRozan, he's a lethal mid-range shooter. He could, get to the, he could get to the bucket very easily. He could get to the foul line. We all knew this about DeMar DeRozan, but just seeing it firsthand every single game, uh, it's a joy to watch him play. It's honestly a joy to watch him play. And I'm very, very proud the Chicago Bulls got him on this team. And good players work well together. All those people questioning the fit of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, I don't hear them anymore. And maybe we'll see them down the line, but I haven't heard of them since the start of the season. And I think our record speaks for itself. So those people need to be quiet right now because DeMar and Zach are putting on a show for this team. Lonzo Ball had 12 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal. Honestly, I can't complain about Lonzo Ball's game today. Again, defensively, I thought he was solid as per usual. The only issue that I have is that we need to get Lonzo Ball more involved in the fourth quarters. I feel like Lonzo Ball is kind of sitting as a passenger in fourth quarters. And that's something that we just simply can't see going forward. I think, again, he's the game changer for me. He's the X factor. I know DeMar and Levine are scoring out of their minds right now. 
and they're both averaging fantastic scoring nights based on the entire season. But Lonzo Ball is the game changer. He made a great amount of threes in today's game as well. And when Lonzo's making threes, we are a dangerous team to watch. And I just feel like in the fourth quarter, we need to get him a little bit more involved and we need to get in the ball and see if he can create something. That's all I really have to say. But I thought it was a decent game from Lonzo Ball. J uh, Javante Green had six points, eight rebounds and one steal. With Javante Green, energy player i feel like he had a very good impact on the boards again it speaks for itself with eight rebounds i thought the bulls the bulls definitely got out rebounded today and the second chance opportunities of the chicago bulls were absolutely horrendous we did not get any second chance opportunities until later on in the fourth quarter which again is when it counts at the end of the day we got what we needed out of that game in the fourth quarter but i thought javante green had a pretty solid night an energy player he got some really good dunks in the game as well he did his thing. I can't complain about his performance. Alex Caruso, the bench of this team, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get to right now. Alex Caruso had nine points, three rebounds, six assists, two steals, and one block. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think this was Alex Crusoe's best game. I thought he got very frustrated. I thought he got a lot of cheap fouls in there. And I just think in the end, sometimes there's a little bit of a hindrance on the court. And I'm going to be honest as well here. I did not want him to come back in the fourth quarter. I, I know that's a very harsh thing to say, but when you saw Derek Jones Jr. playing the way that he played in that fourth quarter, when Alex Crusoe was coming in to finish the game, I, I honestly didn't want to see it. I wanted to continue to see Derek Jones Jr. on the court, but my goodness did he shut me up quickly. And that's what the Bulls team should be doing. If there's any criticisms, any negative energy that fans Bulls fans, obviously analysts, reporters, the, the job of these players is to shut those people up and he definitely shut me up after that because he had a really strong end to the game. And again, he's been consistent throughout the course of the year with his playmaking and his defense. It's been good to see Alex Caruso and he's getting more responsibility and I think that does come with a little bit of a negative side as well with, where we sometimes he's playing too fast for his own good in many ways and he's, he's giving the ball away at times. And I think we saw that today, but overall, I can't complain. Ayo Dosumu had 14 points, four rebounds, two assists. This was by far his best game of his young NBA career. He was six from six from the field. He did not miss a shot. He had a fantastic alley-oop assist to Derek Jones Jr. And in my opinion, he was the game changer today. And if DeMar DeRozan didn't score 37 points tonight, I would be giving the player of the game to Ayo Dosumu because he was, in my opinion, the biggest reason, one of the biggest reasons as to why we won this game. As soon as he came in, this whole game changed. He was guarding Jalen Brown. He was guarding Jason Tatum for a little bit. He was guarding Marcus Smart. And he was holding his own. Defensively, he's ready. We know that now. It's not a question anymore. We have seen him guard All-Stars now. And we've seen him bring the energy that players are lacking. You see Zach Levine sometimes lacking energy. I saw DeMar DeRozan today being extremely lazy and resulting to personal fouls over trying to play some solid defense. It happens. This team was a little bit lazy in the second quarter and the third quarter. And Io changed the game as soon as he came on. He got rightful minutes in the fourth quarter and he deserved those minutes and he deserves more minutes going forward for this absolutely beautiful performance that he had today. He would have been my player of the game if the Martis didn't decide that he wants to drop 37 points tonight. So fair play to Io. Derek Jones Jr., nine points, four rebounds, one assist and two blocks. Again, a phenomenal game from Derek Jones Jr. as well. Again, a hustle player. He, in my opinion, in the fourth quarter, you saw Jalen Brown in, this, in the second quarter, bonkers. He went bonkers. I think Jason Tatum was steady the entire game, and that's what led him to have his good game. But in the fourth quarter, Derek Jones Jr. shut both of those players down. He brought energy. He brought hustle. He brought his athleticism to the play. And Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum just simply could not get going in the fourth quarter. And I think Io, Derek Jones Jr., Alex Caruso, these bench players that supposedly we have no depth in this team. To that person that said that, I keep receipts. We have no depth in this team. The depth showed itself tonight. And they ended up shutting down Boston's two best players. So fair play to Derek Jones Jr. on an elite game. In, in, in today's performance and again definitely deserves more minutes after this I think we're now starting to see the finalization of the rotation and it's great to see that these players are stepping up to the occasion when we needed them in this game we absolutely needed them 
And Tony Bradley had four points, five rebounds, and two blocks. The same thing goes for Tony Bradley. As soon as he comes in, the energy changes, the impact he makes on the defensive end and rebounding wise. For many people, it says we don't have room protection. In the two games that he's played meaningful minutes, he's got four blocks in two games which I think is very good to see. Nikola Vucevic had two blocks as well. I think the rim protection is slowly starting to improve. It's still a big weakness, but it's improving every single game. Nikola Vucevic is showing himself a little bit, and Tony Bradley's making a huge impact on the blocking side of the ball and rebounding as well. It's really good to see. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the must improve. When you look at this team, do you really see a must improve in this team? I mean, I know we were down by 19, and yes, I think you could probably give a few out there, but look at the way that we won this game. We absolutely had a fantastic fourth quarter. I believe the boss, at one point, it was like a 28 to nine um, point difference in the fourth quarter, which was, it's, it's unbelievable how good our fourth quarter was. I don't want to give a must improve on a huge victory like this and a very, very meaningful victory as well. I'm sure you could give one out if you really want to in the comments below, but I thought this game was a tremendous comeback and I don't feel the need to target get anybody out because I think everybody played their part in this comeback. The player of the game will be DeMar DeRozan. I think when you drop 37 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists and he played a little bit of, uh, he played solid, I guess solid defense, I want to say great. I think you have to take notice. If it wasn't, trust me, if it wasn't for DeMar dropping 37, I would have given it to Io. I absolutely loved how Io played, but DeMar, I mean, he's the second option on this team. Put it that way. He's putting, he's dropping 37 points, and he is the second option. Zach Levine, by all stretch of the means, has not had a good couple of games. He's dropping 26, um, two nights in a row now. But two nights, he's been very, very cold in the first half. I think all season, he's been very cold in the first half, and he picks it up in the second half. And at the end of the day, I don't know why that is. But DeMar's the second option. I think if you all look at it based on who's the best player, who's the first option, many people would have said DeMar is the second option on this team. And he is thriving in that role right now. And dropping 37 again. He had a fantastic game last game. He dominated against the Raptors. And he's done it again against Boston. He's having a tremendous season so far. And for all those people that are, that are I guess... Um, fighting that this team won't fit well together. I, I really want to hear what those people have to say after this game and this miraculous comeback. We will verse Boston two more times this season. We have versed them once. Uh, I, I think there'll be serious questions asked about Boston. I feel like this is definitely going to be something that fans, reporters, analysts, they're going to talk about the Bulls at halftime. I think they're going to talk about Boston at full time because I don't see how they allow a comeback like this to happen on their home ground within one quarter. I think it's very, very shocking to see from the Boston side of things. And I think many people begin to ask questions. It's still very early on, but I think you've seen this a few times from Boston now where they've given up leads or they've choked in very clutch situations. Double overtime against the Knicks, double overtime against the Wizards, and now obviously losing the fourth quarter against the Bulls. It's not a great time at the moment for the Boston Celtics, but there are still positive signs there that you need to look at. And we'll verse them two more times. So we'll see if they're going to be um, heading down a good road or bad road. I think it's going to be a very long time until we verse them again. So we'll start to see a little bit more about how Boston play. The Bulls record is 6-1. and one. We're going to be talking about a 5-2. and two. I was completely ready to bash this team. I'm not going to be... I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I was really upset with the way that we played. And I think it was going to be one of the worst losses if we did lose this game. But it's amazing how things change when you just see a win in the column. And we definitely stole this win. I think 9 times out of 10, Boston wins that game. And this time, we won the game. So congratulations to the Chicago Bulls on a fantastic win. We are 6-1. and one, And our next game is a against the Philadelphia 76ers. We'll be running, running into that game with momentum after that great comeback against the Boston Celtics. But we must make sure that we're not in this position again where we are down by 19 points. Joel Embiid rested against the Portland Trailblazers today. And he'll be ready for the Chicago Bulls, I believe. I believe he'll be playing and he'll definitely be ready. And we need to be ready for them as well. And I'm very, very confident heading into this game because I feel like this team right now, 
There's a lot of things going into it, but I think many people are starting to take us seriously and that's all I want. I want respect in the way that we play. I want respect by other fans. I want respect by the league. And it looks like we're slowly starting to get that respect and this game will add more respect to our name. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Please like and subscribe if you're new. I don't think this is the best analytical video you're gonna see from me. I always like to call myself out. This is definitely an emotion video. I'm super stoked, I'm excited, I'm happy. And sometimes analytics, sometimes statistics, all of that nonsense, at times you need to throw it out the window. And sometimes emotion, as an NBA fan, you need to feel these wins, feel these emotions. And this is definitely an emotional victory for the Chicago Bulls. I think many people will be very happy with how we came back. Maybe people will take it a little bit more seriously and criticize the Bulls. And I think that there are some criticisms there, but I don't think I'm going to be the one that's going to bring them out. So have a wonderful and safe day, Bulls Nation. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned. If you watch the game reactions, I'll see you against Philly. If not, I'll see you tomorrow for more Bulls videos. Take care and peace.